Today I've got 15 fall and Halloween swags and wreaths all in one place. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The next one is going to be a Dahlia wreath. I forgot to mention that all of these projects are from Dollar Tree. Okay, so somebody donated to me a huge amount of crafting supplies and a lot of it, almost all of it was fall. So that was last year and I am going to be using a lot of those pieces to make a wreath this year. All right, so we have eucalyptus and a variety of leaves and we have our dahlia with the burlap. This is a 14 inch wreath from Dollar Tree. You can get it in several colors, just whatever's available to you. And then we're gonna use some type of ribbon or burlap ribbon to go around the wreath. This color doesn't matter so much because we're gonna be covering it. Um, but you can definitely use, you know, whatever color that you like. You can even use scraps. Thank you so much to those of you who went over and watched my video, the Hobby Lobby video. It is not a very popular video um, for me on this channel, so I know that's not necessarily what my viewers are looking for, and that is totally okay. But if you did come by, I'm going to give you a big shout out for watching that. It means a lot to me when you support anything that I do on this channel. Okay, so we're gonna continue to wrap around. This will make it almost completely around. I'm gonna use dots of glue here and there. You wanna kind of pull these not too tight, but you wanna kind of overlap as sparingly as you can. And that is one whole spool of that burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree. So I've got one extra section. If you have another spool of the same thing, you can certainly use that. But if you have a scrap, and we're just gonna say that this is a scrap, you can just wrap that around there. As long as the colors are somewhat the same so that they don't scream through once you get your florals and your greenery on, then it'll be totally fine. Can't give up, right? When you've invested this much time, there's no giving up. So we're just gonna wrap that little spot and put some hot glue on there. And then we're gonna just simply trim it off and we're good to go. We've got our wreath form ready. So I'm gonna take these beautiful picks don't you love these? These are gorgeous and I love these colors. Just gonna cut all these off the branches. We're gonna make these more manageable. And because we, I'm gonna want a full coverage with these leaves, I need them all taken apart. So we're gonna, this is so easy. I know I'm out of camera angle here. I know you can't see up there, but this is gonna be so easy. You're gonna lay one down, kind of pointing off in one direction. We want all of our leaves to point the same way, right? All going in the same direction. And then you're gonna put one kind of off to the right. Gonna add it, a little bit of glue there. You don't have to just burn yourself with the glue. You don't have to pour it out, but you know you're gonna need a little bit and hold it in place for just a second. We're gonna add the next one kind of upward and to the left. Be sure you connect it to the wreath and the other leaf. And then we're gonna take the next leaf and point it up and to the right. And this is how we're gonna do it all the way around this wreath and you won't be able to see any little holes or cracks. I used four of these picks to do this wreath, and I only had one little spot that needed extra, but I'll show you in a minute how I fixed that. Continuing along here, and you can just trim off the little stems. Um, I could have cut them shorter, so you may wanna just cut yours right off at the base of the leaf to save yourself a little bit of time. See, I got all the way around and I just had one little piece that needed covered. So I had another leaf in my pile, in my scrap pile that matches close enough and you won't be able to see it. I'm going to kind of layer it back behind and glue it down. And there is our wreath with the base of leaves. Now I'm going to take those dahlias and push all the greenery up to the head of the flower because we want to use the greenery too. And then I'm going to cut them off as close as I can to the flower. The eucalyptus comes off the pick very easily. It just slides right off each one of them. Okay, so I'm gonna take the, take the leaves off and then pull this part out. You can cut it off, but it really does just pull right out. I found that out later. Pull the little plastic part off the leaves and then it's gonna be, it fits perfectly over there so you get a flatter surface to attach. See the two different sizes? All right, we're gonna start gluing these down now. This is gonna be in a four. One, two, three, four, north, south, east, and west. I'm gonna start off with the largest of the dahlias and then start working um, 
in four sections. So I did the top, the bottom, and then I will put one large one on each of the sides approximately. I don't get the ruler out to do this kind of stuff because I'm not that picky about having it perfect. Um, but you can do it however you like. And then I'm going to take one of each of the smaller ones, add a little hot glue, and then snug it right up and against the bigger one. I'm going to use the same pattern all the way around so it's the top two is large and small, the next two large and small, the next one is large and then small, so we're going on a circular pattern. We're following the pattern all the way around like clockwork. Okay, so I'm going to put a little glue here and then it's going to be right above that one. So you can see that pattern, right? This is easy, so easy. I'm going to take a piece of this willow, cut it up, and then use little pieces here and there to give us sort of movement in the wreath, to give us a little bit of extra interest. So I'm just going to do the same thing all the way around. So if I do it to one little duo of flowers, I'm going to do it to each set all the way around the wreath. This is very simple. Just take your time. Then I'm going to do the same with the eucalyptus, little hot glue and I'm going to press it down into the center part going outward of each one of the leaves. I'm going to continue around just like this all the way around. And I think that the variety of textures in the flowers, in the leaves, in the eucalyptus, which is kind of a plastic, and then the little fluffy seedy looking willow branches, I think it makes a lot of interest and makes this a really pretty wreath. So let's go to these little, whatever these are, and we're gonna cut these off. These were just some scraps from last year that I had in another arrangement. And in the center of each of the little bunches of flowers, I'm gonna put one of these little pom-poms or whatever you wanna call these little things. I took the greenery off of them and I'm gonna use that too because that gives it another little bit of interest. It's kind of spiky, so it's a different texture and it gives it a little more green. I live in the south and this is still summertime and we're thinking about early fall so we definitely still have some greenery um, you know some green in our environment most of us in the south so we're going to continue around y'all if you're enjoying this video i would appreciate it so much if you would share it with your friends or family or on your social media anybody who you think would enjoy this video I would really, really appreciate it. It helps my channel to grow. It lets me know that my hard work is paying off and that people are seeing my, my work and that they're enjoying it. And when my channel grows, I can share back with you by buying more supplies and you know, making more trips to the thrift store and really putting out the best material I can for you. So it's very much appreciated. So we're just going to continue along and I have more eucalyptus left so I'm just going to go back in and add it wherever I think I need it. And I really like the way that the green and that little touch of orange on the tips, it breaks up the orange that is in the kind of the peachy orange tan color in the flowers and then the base of the leaves on here. You can certainly use any leaves that you like but if you like this almost monochrome look then those leaves are perfect with these flowers and this other greenery. Be sure that you have some pieces that are on the inside of your wreath as well, not just on the outside. And you don't want to glue anything completely flat down. You want it to have some movement because you want it to appear as though it's real. So this is how it looks. Do you like this? Give me a thumbs up if you like this wreath. Okay, now a little tip, you can grab your little heat gun and go over all of those little strings of glue and it'll melt them straight away and you won't see any of that in your final project. Y'all, my videos come out on Mondays and Thursdays For the first at project, five. we have a grapevine wreath. We're going to take this gorgeous little sign from Dollar Tree. It's the candy corn sign, it says trick or treat. We're gonna take some of this mesh tubing, some ribbon of your choice, a grapevine wreath. I've got some bittersweet, a variety of yellow and orange foliage. Some are from the Dollar Tree and one I think came from Walmart but was thrifted. 
and then I want to show you real quick how to fix a wreath that is out of shape. Now this is sort of an oval shape or an oblong shape. You can just take a little bit of uh, floral wire and fix the form whenever it goes flat or you can use a little bit of jute. See there now I got the same width on both sides. It was a little lopsided on one side and that that does happen with natural um, items they shrink and expand so all right we're going to pull the bow off of here very carefully so we don't peel off the paint and then take a look at these picks we're going to cut these off not too long but long enough that we have something to thread through the grapevine wreath so i know i want it to go this way and i'm going to just start adding in my picks the greenery i chose to add in to the bottom um, toward the bottom so like about halfway down I guess and it's gonna go around the bottom and I'm gonna keep all of these in the same um, slant I guess the same angle gonna put them all in kind of going downward till we get toward the middle and then on the other side we will start over also going downward I'll continue along here trying to vary the color a little bit that way I get a good representation of the yellows and the oranges. I like that this is sort of a rustic look. It is definitely Halloween, but it, I'm certainly feeling the rustic fall vibes in that it is a grapevine wreath, which is woody, and the foliage, which is definitely changing colors for fall. So I guess if it didn't say trick or treat, this could actually be fall and Halloween. Now once it's all filled in, I'm just gonna fluff a little bit. Then the little pieces of bittersweet that I took apart, I'm just gonna start adding those in here or there. I want them to extend out uh, beyond the wreath. They're gonna be farther away from the wreath than the greenery, which I think is a cute look. It gives that little flyaway look that Ramon from Ramon at Home talks about. And I'm just going to add them here and there. I don't, I'm not looking for a symmetrical look on this project. Um, so you see I've got the greenery higher on the right than on the left, but we're going to have a bow on the left. So no worries about that. Now we have to have something to attach this down to the sign. And rather than just putting down hot glue and then hoping that it clings, which it won't because the hot glue is going to go right through the wreath, we're going to use pipe cleaners. We're gonna add some hot glue and then you can put a little piece of scrap paper over that. That's gonna help secure it. And then you can bend these up and we'll be able to thread these through and put them on there and possibly take it off. If you wanted to use this after Halloween, you could just remove this and you would have a beautiful fall wreath maybe for Thanksgiving. Friendsgiving, whichever you prefer. Now I'm just gonna easily thread this through. This grapevine wreath is not very tightly wrapped. You can see actually light through it and that makes it easier to attach things down. Just thread it through there and then twist it around. I always add links underneath the video. So if there's anything that you need, um, you can find it in my Amazon store most likely or you can leave me a question, I'll be happy to help you. All right, so here is my bow maker. I made this myself. I am going to link the video on how you can make one. It was very easy, so you don't have to worry about that. Very easy. If you're not able to do it for yourself, if you have somebody who can help you, it would be a great help if you have arthritis, if you have any kind of problems with your hands. This can help you. Um, I'm not saying you have to have it, because you can certainly make this kind of bow without it, but I love to be able to use my bow maker. And I wanna share with you how you can make one if you got some scraps around and you don't have to spend the money. So I'm just going to make these loops the same size on both ends and I have about seven inches for each one. And then the tails are just a tad longer than that. I'm gonna cut that off. This is a sort of a satin ribbon and it has a black stitched wired edge this black ribbon is very good quality but it is not wired but it is stiff enough that it's going to hold itself and you'll see that soon this one doesn't have any type of a pattern on it it's exactly the same on both sides so we don't have to twist like we did with the orange one 
So I'm just getting an idea there of how big I want it to be. And I know that I want it to be about an inch smaller than the orange one that's underneath. So I'm gonna do the same process and just loop over on this side. I like to fold mine in the middle and then push them down. It's a little bit easier for me to handle that way. It keeps it from flipping. And then we'll trim that tail. And then my burlap ribbon is going to go on top of that. This is gonna be a pretty bow, y'all, but you can definitely either skip the bow if that's not your thing, or you could do any type of bow that you've seen me do before that you like. I do have a bow video, so that can help you if you don't like this particular one. Now this white bow is going to be, or cream colored bow, is gonna be an inch smaller than the black one. You can see like little steps, little steps. And this one is wired also. In my experience, if you have a bow that doesn't have wire, you wanna put that one sort of toward the middle. It just works better that way because the wired ribbons around it will give it a little body and that's helpful. All right, now I'm gonna take this mesh tubing and just make like, it looks like a shoelace bow, but we're gonna continue to make loops back and forth, back and forth until we have three or four on each side, whatever thickness you like. You can find this type of tubing at most Dollar Trees in a variety of colors. This one is something I already had on hand. Okay, so then we trim that one off. I'm gonna slip my tie underneath the bottom while I'm holding on to that stack of bows. Okay, so I'm just gonna, just gonna loop it, but not tighten it all the way down. I'm gonna grab it toward the center move it up you can see the indentions where the poles were just slide that right into it then you can pull it just a tad more because y'all give me a hand clap here look what i did i remembered to put the pipe cleaner in the back i mean look at that i did i remembered this time i never remembered to do that once you have tightened it down you can clip it off and start dovetailing those ends. You want it to have a nice finish. If you don't want to dovetail, you can cut it at a slant. But I like the dovetail. And we're gonna do each one of those tails the same way, except for the mesh tubing on top. And we can just leave that alone and trim it up later when we get ready. Okay, so now we're gonna fluff. We're gonna pull the bows up and kind of spread those out. And you see the black is doing great on its own, even though it doesn't have any wire in it. It looks good in there. Gives a lot of depth. I like that. It's pretty. All right, so now we're gonna feed it through and you can see here that I'm putting it a little bit off to the left of the candy corn. I'm feeding it through there just like we did the sign that we put on. And I will pull this tightly, twist it around, and then kind of rotate it down behind. And you can trim it off or you can just fold it over. And when you fluff your bow, you won't be able to see it. Now is the time you can really get an idea of the size of the bow and how big you want it to be. And you can start clipping off the ends a little bit shorter if you need them. And I like these a little shorter. Gives it a little fly away. I think it's pretty that way. But again, do this your own way. With a bow, without a bow, different colored bows, different size ribbon, different amounts, make it as thick as you like, or don't put it on there at all. That is completely up to you, but the good thing is you can take it off after Halloween and just have a beautiful piece on your door without any hint of Halloween. All right, so I'm gonna take some more of this and we're going to make another little bow like we did on the bow maker. So if you don't have a bow maker, you can do it by hand just like this. I'm gonna have two loops on each side and we're gonna add just a little bit of an accent down in the greenery. You can take another little piece, tie it around the middle, tie it in a double knot, and then we are going to be tucking that down into our leaves there on the bottom. You can wire this and put it down instead of gluing it if you would like, but it does sit nicely, and it flips out of my hand, it does sit nicely down into the wreath. You can put it kind of on the branch of the leaves so that the glue doesn't sink down in there and just hold it in place with your scissors or a popsicle stick or a finger protector on your hands. Be very careful. 
We'll do the same thing on this side and press it down and hold it until the glue cools or sets up or dries. And then in order for this not to be in the way, I'm just gonna add a dot, just a little dot of glue to hold these leaves back. Look at that. That's cute. Do y'all think that's cute? I know if you like a modern look, this is not gonna be your thing. Certainly not gonna be your thing. But my little rustic heart is very happy right now. All right, so we're just gonna use a wreath form from the Dollar Tree. I think this is the 14 inch. I'm going to use a roll of burlap, but you can definitely use deco mesh. I have some burlap ribbon, and then I have some thrifted ribbon here. It's like a satin with a black trim. Of course, my candy corn picks. We're gonna use the smaller ones there. And I'm gonna use some pipe cleaners to hold these down on the wreath form. So we're gonna start off by taking these um, pipe cleaners or Chanel stems. Mine happen to be sort of a spiral type whatever, but I got them at the thrift store. I just pick these up whenever I see them because I use a lot of them when I'm making wreaths and swags. So we're gonna start by going across these center joints. We're just gonna cross them over. You can see what I did there. And we're gonna go all the way around just working on that outside, sort of the third ring if you are counting from the inside outward. If you cross them over in the middle, that will keep them from sliding around. So now I am going to put two more in between each one of the ones that we already did. Kind of space them sort of evenly. If you need to, you can take your glue gun and put a dot of glue there to keep it from sliding around on that ring. Whatever is going to make it easier for you is gonna be just fine. But you can see they kind of slide even when you twist them on tight. So just grab your glue gun. Protect your fingers here, y'all. Especially if you're not used to using a glue gun. That glue gets super hot. We're gonna continue around the wreath doing the same thing in every section. So two in between each one of the original ones we did. Very easy, can see what I'm doing. And I just like to push them to the outside because it makes it a little bit easier, um, gets them out of the way so I can continue to work. And we like easy things, don't we? We like little tips. By the way, thank you all for giving little tips in the comment section, I appreciate that. Um, for everybody who's leaving tips, there may be a little giveaway for you guys. Yeah, there may be, so stay tuned and keep sharing those wonderful tips. I appreciate it. Now it's time to work on the wreath. So I'm gonna be cutting these into little 10 inch sections. I am going to fold it over two times, about three quarters of an inch, maybe half of an inch would be good enough. I'm gonna walk my fingers up, flip it around, do the same thing on the other side, and now we have this cute little bow tie. Looks like a little bow tie, doesn't it? And then we're gonna take a clip to hold it together, making sure our ends are folded under, and that's gonna keep the little ravel pieces on the inside. Same thing here, I'm gonna fold it twice, walk my little fingers up, twist it around, fold that over, pinch it to the center, and then put our clip on. And you're gonna continue this process until you have 18 of these cute little bows. Now we're gonna start applying them to the wreath. So you just pull the clip off the back, make sure that the folded side is downward, put it in the middle of whichever area you wanna start with, and then give it a few tight twists to hold it in place. Here we go again on the next one. Put it right above it and twist it. I like to use a clockwise kind of direction in this type of a wreath. So you're gonna lay the next one down and you're going to give it a few twists and then get your little twist out of the way. Continue around the next one and don't worry about what's on top of what and what's getting in the way because when you fluff it later, everything is going to look so much better. It's always kind of rough in the beginning. So we're back around to the end and this is the last one we're putting on. Same process, press it down in the middle Hold it tightly a couple of twists, and now it's all together. So now you can rotate, turn the little bows, turn them inward and outward, arrange them so that they look nice together, that they fit nicely together, flip them over if they've kind of gotten out of shape. 
And so you can tuck and move these little pieces of the bow around until they are all in a nice pretty shape. And you can see what I'm just pulling outward and downward, outward and downward. So kind of up on the left and down on the right. And that's gonna give you this beautiful shape that you end up with. And I'm just getting all of my little twist ties out of the way at this point. And this is how it's going to look. Now we're gonna work on the ribbon. So I'm just gonna do 10 inches of each of these. This one does not have any wire in it. The white one does have wire in it. So it's good either way. And then this beautiful ribbon also is wired. I love how it's got the black trim on it. Very nice. So I'm just gonna continue along. There'll be 18 pieces of orange of this orange there'll be 18 pieces of the other orange and then 18 pieces of this beautiful white or cream color so I'm going to dovetail the ends of each one of these I like the look of a dovetail with these ribbon stacks I think it just um, it just gives a lot of interest I think it's pretty and I can't imagine doing it any other way so here we go and let's start stacking so now you pretty much want to have ensure that you have the ribbons that have some structure which would be the ones that have wire put those on the bottom and put your floppy ribbon on top because the wire from underneath will help give a little bit of body and hold up the floppier ribbon that's on top always works for me and I'm never disappointed when I do it that way okay so we're gonna take the little stack and put it right down in the middle if it's easier for you, you can assemble all of your little stacks. Use clips just like we did before and hold them together. Or you can do one at a time, which is what I generally do. Because they're easy and quick. Crossing it over, the wired ones on the bottom, and then the floppy one on the top. Plus, we have orange, white, and orange. And I like that pattern. It's just a little bit of black in there. It gives it a little bit of detail. So holding on to the middle, gave it a slight little fluff just to make sure the ribbons aren't flipped in the wrong direction. And then tightly cinch it down and then move the wire out of the way. You can do a bit of a fluff here, but it's gonna get all kind of bunched up. And you can see here I'm back to the beginning. So I'm at the, well, I'm at the very end. I've met up to the beginning again. And this is kind of what it looks like. It's kind of mushy and out of order. So we're gonna fluff, but we're gonna tuck back these pieces of Chanel stem or pipe cleaner, whichever you prefer to call it. You can use wire cutters and just trim these off if you want, or to give it a little more security if you're gonna be putting it outside where it might be in the wind, you can twist it back around onto the wire underneath the bow. You don't want to do it too tightly because you don't want your bows to sink in. You still want them to look like they're floating on top or the uh, ribbon stacks rather. You don't want them to be cinched down too tightly. But you can just twist them around. Now you can see there that you can see my hand through it. Once you fluff this out, you won't be able to see the gaps anymore. So now we're going to work on the, the candy corn part. And I tried a lot of different patterns here, but I prefer to do it with the um, triple pick or the little trio pick here. They're the smaller ones. These are on a very nice wire, so you can bend them exactly how you like them. I'm going to bend mine this way, and in just a second, you'll see exactly how I'm doing it so that it will give it a little body and stand up out of the wreath instead of laying flat. I'm putting some hot glue right on top of where the, pop, the pipe cleaners are twisted. We're gonna skip one and go to the next one. So every other little bunch of ribbons is going to get adorned with the candy corn. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna add a little bit of glue. I've twisted my candy corn so that the pick has like a little seat. It's a little crook in it. And then you bend the candy corn upward. So here it is again. Now you can see how it's bent and the bottom, I'm gonna bend it down just a little, almost like it's sitting on top. 
I have found that these do not come off this way. This was a, um, and I did a lot of fluffing, as you'll see later, and they did not come off. So I'm all the way back to the beginning, doing every other one. And this is how it is going to look so far. Now this is without being fluffed up and beautified yet. So she's had her hair cut, but we haven't styled it. We're gonna do that very easily. You're just gonna pull out your ribbons. You're gonna overlap where you need to if you don't want your wires to be seen on your candy corn, which I don't mind, but if you don't want them to show, then you're just going to take one of your ribbons and pull it over on the top and it will cover it up. So you can kind of use the ribbons with the wire and you can place those pretty much where you want to because the wire will hold them in their place. Continue all the way around and fluff. Then you can add a middle piece if you would like. So I'm just giving you some options here. But you'll see in the end that I chose to leave mine without any sign with it. And I think it looks nice just like this. Do you like this candy corn wreath? I am absolutely loving this candy corn wreath. So we're going to start with these corn husks, and I got these in the what they call the ethnic food section of Walmart. 70 to 80 leaves in a bag is going to get you a lot of projects done. This is a thrifted wreath that I have. I did see some at Dollar Tree, but I think they're the $3 um, wreaths. You could also use probably a you know foam if you wanted to here, but you got to be careful. Stuff likes to melt, and this hay that's in here will give you a nice firm base. All right, so we're gonna look at the corn husk. They're in a variety of colors. I don't want to bleach mine because I like, again, the rustic look, and I love the variation of color. So now I'm just going to tear them down to the right size. This particular brand I was very, very happy with because I thought they would be more fragile, but they are actually quite flexible. And you'll see that in this project. So I can't guarantee what the fresh ones would be, like if you took them out of a, a field or somebody's garden because they might would be more brittle and dried out and I know that there are um, wreaths that you can make by soaking these first but you know how I like to do I want to make this something that most people can do with as little difficulty as possible so I'm going to show you how to do it without all the bleaching and soaking and stuff but you do what you like so I'm going to overlap them all. and you can see here how that will look we're just going to continue around like this, overlapping about halfway. And I kind of got, I'm kind of giving it like a, an eyeball from the corner. I don't want, or the side, you know, that where the curve ends as you're going over the side of the wreath. So pretty much I'm gluing it down toward the center here, if you're looking at this flat like a circle. You know, in my head, that made a lot more sense than when it came out of my mouth. But do you see what I'm saying here? Do you see the space that is left after I glue it down between my fingers and the edge of the wreath? That's kind of what you want. If you're using this type of wreath because you want to be sure that you have enough of this husk to go all the way around the front of your wreath and to overhang it, right? Because we want this to be sort of like a little starburst pattern. So continuing around, I'm gluing them down. They're just overlapping in the middle. Instead of doing these one at a time, I'm gonna do the entire back first. And you can do this too. I thought this was probably the easiest way to do it. By the way, you're gonna to wanna to put that glue gun temperature on low because you're gonna be touching this a lot. Get your finger protectors, whichever way you wanna do this, just be safe. I don't want any of my crafty friends having any injuries when watching my videos and trying to recreate anything. Especially if you have neuropathy, you don't have good feeling in your hands, be really careful. Okay, so this is how to look in the back, and then when you flip it over, you can see which one needs to come down first. And we're gonna follow that circle all the way around. A Little bit of glue right on the top. I don't wanna glue this down on the tip because it will curl completely under, and I want that part to be free. So we fold it and glue it like toward the center where my finger is, and we let the rest of the little tip there just overhang just like this. Now I'm going to continue to do this. I'll speed it up a little bit. Um, I had requests that people 
like to see it a little bit slower so they get a better idea of what I'm doing. So this is why I'm doing this here. Um, if y'all make these projects, which I really hope you do, I want you to hang on to the wreath. Now I'm going to show you how to make two. So if you make your two wreaths, I want you to hang on to them because later in another video, we're going to decorate them. Yep, what I'm going to show you today is going to be the simple little rustic farmhouse, whatever you want to call it, technique for these wreaths. And then later, we're going to embellish them. So that's going to be a lot of fun. But I want to give you some time to get your materials together and to make your wreath bases. And then maybe next week, we'll work on these together and make them really special. So continue around just like this. They're going to overlap a little. And you see, if you had a, a set of these corn husks that were rough and really dry, you wouldn't be able to fold them and bend them like that. They wouldn't be as pliable and they would be cracking. So just be cautious of that and just try to, you know, watch out for that sort of thing. Now you can see where I have glued down this first layer all the way around that you can still see the wreath underneath. See how it looks on the back? And this is how it's going to look on the front to begin with. We're going to go down about an inch and then begin to overlap and make another row here. This is going to be where we're going to curve over and fill in our little blank spaces. So you can continue around just like this. You can go side to side. You can overlap just a little bit. You can make this wreath as thick and fluffy as you would like. Continue around. You can see how they overlap on the bottom, how they kind of just lay on top, one on top of the other. And you want to keep going in a circular pattern all the way around. So if you don't have this type of a wreath form, don't worry about it. I'm going to show you on the next wreath what you can do to make yourself a, a sufficient wreath base. Let's put it that way. And you can get the supplies from Dollar Tree, so that'll be good too. So just keep watching this so you get an idea of the pattern. I want you to know what is going on here. Again, we're not going all the way to the top. Now by doing this, by stepping down just a little bit and making these glue down further, when you fold them over on the front, you will have more uh, length so that they will be a little bit longer. You see this? So I don't know exactly what the pattern is for this, but I like to call this like a starburst because it looks sort of like the sun. So that's just what I'm going to call this wreath. This is going to be our starburst. How about that? This is our first one. Continue around. You want to fill in all of your holes, all of your little spots. You, like I said, make it as thick or thin as you want. And just press it down and protect your fingers. You can see how there are different levels there. And the benefit of having this type of a wreath is that if it's under there and you can see it, not a big deal, right? Because you usually have corn and hay bales and all that at a farm, right? So that would be perfectly fine. But if you want to cover it up, I'm showing you how you can do that too. So now you're going to get your wreath. You're going to look at it and say, where do I need extras? And I can clearly see where I need to add in a little bit more. I love how it, the, the edges just naturally kind of curl down, you know? Now it's going to depend too on which way you put these husks on here. They will curl outward too if you want to turn it the other way. You know, when it grows up around, it's like the leaves that grow up around the corn, the ear of corn, and they curve inward to wrap around it, right? So those, what you're seeing is me putting the curved side downward. But you could do them upward if you wanted to, and it'd be a little more fluffy. A little more floral-like, maybe. So now this is much better, right? And look at the variation in the color there. I love that. That grayish green is so pretty. So now as you add on your layers, getting closer and closer to the last row that you want to put on here. I've only got like three rows. You're going to use a thinner piece. So tear it smaller than the other pieces. Start with the widest, then the next one, and then the smallest toward the top. It layers nicely this way. Um, and I really like the look of it. 
Now I'm going back up to the top row. This is not difficult. You don't have to do it this way. You can go back down, but this is just going to give it the length of each little husk that sticks out. You can see here, some will be shorter and some will be longer. And I like that. And you can do it like this. This is what I did to make sure that that would fit right in the spot where I wanted it. I just kind of laid it out there, looked at it, flipped it over, and then glued it down. So please do not be intimidated by this. This is not hard. Maybe this is something that you could do while you're sitting and watching a good movie. See here how they curve and how you can still see the wreath form underneath it? I really like that. Now we need something to hang it, so I'm going to give you this option to hang it because I'm going to show you a different one on the other wreath. But I'm just going to tie a really simple knot and a piece of leftover burlap that I had. Not burlap, jute. I do that all the time. And then I'm going to find a spot on the back where I want it to be my top. I'm going to add some hot glue and just take another piece of that corn husk, tear it, and use that as a little, little backing there to cover that up. And then all you have to do is just trim down that jute so it doesn't show on the other side. Let it dry for a minute. And then once you flip it over, this is how it will look. And you can use it just like this with nothing else as you would like. You can follow me on my social media. I'd love to see you there. Okay, so this is where we're going to make our own base. You're going to take two bamboo wreaths from Dollar Tree. You can see they're shaped funny they're not completely round one is smaller than the other that is not going to be a big deal we're going to take our tags of course off of there and lay them on top of one another y'all this is how i store my jute isn't that cute i did a video on this uh probably two years ago where i made this i love it my jute never gets tangled up and it looks nice sitting right there i don't lose my jute nothing doesn't roll off the table i love it it's a little thrifted piece that i got Okay, so I'm just going to go in four sections here and just tie these two together. Y'all know how to tie a knot. That's all I'm doing. I'm just tying a double knot. I'm just kind of pushing that wreath around where I want it. Get it real nice and tight. So that it won't slip on us when we start wrapping it because we will be wrapping this up. So we're going to do top and bottom, or north and south, and then east and west, or west and east, or side to side, whichever way you want to call it. And then it will be in one piece. I'm going to call this one wreath at this point. And you can use wire if you would rather use like some floral wire or something like that. But it doesn't take a lot to get these to stay together and they don't weigh very much. So I'm going to take some of this cheapy decorative mesh from Dollar Tree. And I am going to wrap it around. And I chose this color because I had it in my stash already. And because it looks very close to, you know, like a cream color. And it's going to look nice behind my, my pieces of corn husk. Right? It's going to kind of blend in. And I like to get it all wrapped up. I didn't want to use the bear. You could though. You could actually use the bear, but I wanted a little more surface area to put the glue on to put my pieces down. So I'm going to use this entire roll and go all the way around here. And I believe I got around it twice. So then when I get back to the end, I'm just going to gather it up, flip it over, tuck it into that last section that I rolled up. Easy enough. And then I'm just going to grab my glue gun and I'm just going to poke it down in there and put a lots of little dots of glue in there to hold it in. Once it's dry, this is how it's going to look. And you can use either side of it. You can turn it whichever direction you like. Now I'm going to start with these. These are about one to one and a half inches wide um, where the ends of it, where we're gluing it down. So they're going to be a lot smaller on this one, okay? You can easily tear them into pieces. And then you're going to start stacking them. Now we're going to be going, you can either go in clockwise or counterclockwise position, whichever you would like to do. And we're going to start stacking and overlapping, going around this wreath, all in one direction, all the tips one way, all the glue one way. I want part of this to be overhanging the outside, and then we're going to have some that go slightly toward the inner circle of this wreath. You can see what I'm doing. 
and you can see that there's definitely a curve when I put the glue on there so that's I'm putting the uh, the curve downward but you could flick yours out if you would like and they would just stand out from the wreath a little bit more so it depends on the look really that you're going for pressing down to make sure that it goes through and hangs on to the surface really nicely it doesn't take a ton of glue like you don't have to like glue the whole thing down I want to have a little bit of movement in the pieces of corn husk on the top like you know when the wind blows or the breeze or whatever I want to see that so I don't want to like glue the entire length down just the bottom and we're going to continue along like that overlapping a little toward the inside a little in the center and then a little toward the outside you can see what we're doing here so for all of the, those of you who participated in the giveaway from our video last week your names will be put in a hat and I should have that information to you sometime today if you don't see it already then sometime this afternoon I will have the winner announced in underneath the comment that you make and also in my community tab so be sure that you have hit the um, the bell to get all notifications all right when you come back around to the beginning I want to slow it down so you can see what we're doing here I'm just gonna lift up a little bit and continue around I'm not gonna glue the tips where I'd already gone down I'm not gonna glue those down I'm just gonna kind of move them out of the way and again they're kind of pliable so they'll move a little bit you know you can get a little lift out of them I'm just looking to see what looks good kind of lay it down and again you know try to look at your when you're tearing those and you're pulling those apart and getting your stack ready to put them down choose some ones with some variation in color they look really pretty and so natural and earthy to me I just love it you know me and my rustic stuff you know how I do all right so we are back around and almost done filling in our last little swing of it here but keep going because you don't you don't want any gaps or holes you want this to look like one continuous swoop all the way around and don't worry if it starts looking kind of weird it's not a problem just keep going push through and keep looking at it look at it from all angles all sides see where you might want more you can see here I'm kind of looking and pointing to areas where I want to add a little more just add a little hot glue and go ahead and add those in I'm gonna look here and I know that this piece needs some so I'm gonna add it right here toward my outside just to fill out that just a little bit more this is easy to do again these corn husk projects they're not hard to do don't be confused with the length of time it takes to do it because it'll be very rewarding I am so surprised this is the first time I've ever worked with corn husk and I am absolutely in love with the way okay so I'm just now going back in and filling in the little gaps that we had here and when I'm happy with it we'll go ahead and make a hanger I'm gonna use this ribbon from Dollar Tree this is a beautiful it almost looks like a linen and um, it's got a gold trim thought it was really pretty for this project I'm gonna take about 18 inches of this I'm gonna go under my wreath and up through some of the corn husk so it almost disappears in there you gotta be careful I don't want to break anything don't want to tear up any of those beautiful pieces that we worked so hard to lay down I'm gonna pull my ends together and then double it over and make one little knot you can leave the knot on the top if you'd like if not thread it through so that the knot is underneath and then you can trim it off if there's any that is underneath that you need to remove and this is how it is going to look beautiful beautiful
first project we're going to make a skeleton swag using some Dollar Tree Christmas trees, some ribbon, some deco mesh, some deco tubing, a yard pick, some ornaments, some of these floral picks. And that's just to start with. You know I'm always adding stuff. So we're going to start by taking the trees out of the box, taking the bases off. We're going to turn them around so their ends are facing and using two zip ties we're going to attach these together. If you don't have zip ties you can use floral wire, you can use jute, whatever you want to use just get them really tight. Clip off the excess because we're not going to need those showing. And then you're going to start pulling these out. I would normally call this fluffing them up but since they're going to be flat on one side and you're just going to be pulling everything out to the sides, you can call this whatever you want it. We are arranging it then. So now it actually looks like a 2D Christmas tree. That's kind of how it's going to look. You're going to pull those out to the side. You can reach underneath and pull those out to the side. Sometimes two of them will be very close together, so just be sure you separate them. They're kind of um, thin. You know the little branches are thin, so just be sure that you pull each little segment apart. And on the end it does have a longer piece. Do that on both sides. We're going to go over to the yard sign now and just press down and pull the stand off. Alright, I'm going to layer up some deco mesh. I have some that I thrifted so I don't know how much it is and then some from Dollar Tree and I'm going to cut these in 9 inch pieces. So we're going to need 24 9 inch pieces of the stripes and we're going to need 12 9 inch pieces of the black. Now we're going to roll these. They're just going to make little, look like little burritos. We're just going to roll them just going to roll them right over little curls just like this and we're going to stack those together a black and then two of the colored ones just like that you can use your little clips and hold them together as you assemble your bundles so you will have 12 bundles continue along you can see if you don't want to hold it or if you're at the beginning of your roll it won't be as tightly wound but when you get closer to that little paper segment in the middle then um, the rolls will be tighter. There you go. So after we've got all of those assembled we can take them off the clip and start putting them down on the base. I'm going to start on the end and just push it down in there, wrap this around and then there we have the first piece down. I'm going to go to the opposite end and do the same thing. Now you can lay your pieces down any way you want but going from end to end I'm making sure that I keep my patterns the same because that's how my mind works but if you want to start at one end and go all the way down you can certainly do that. I just want to be sure that I have enough for both ends and that they're evenly spaced and so doing it this way is helpful to me in my mind in making sure that everything is where it should be. While we are putting this together I want to take this opportunity to say thank you to everybody who has subscribed to my channel. It seems like lots and lots of people are interested in the Halloween decor and I am very grateful for that because my heart is in fall and winter crafting and I think that um, I think it shows um, I just really have a lot of passion for that and so I like to do it and I'm glad that you like to see it being done so that I can share with you all the things that I like and then you can pick and choose what it is that you want to do that you see me do and change things up like I say make it my own that's what you want to do you want to make it your own and um, you don't have to go overboard you really don't and some things, sometimes I think people get kind of backwards with how they think about things. They think, oh, it's too hard. There's no way I can do it. It's not hard. Some things just take a little more time to do. You know, it's not a fast thing here. It takes a little more time to do it. But you'll get it. You can do it. So now let's go back to that sign. We're going to use a pipe cleaner on the back or Chanel stem, whichever way you prefer to call it. I'm going to add some hot glue and just roll it around in there and then using a little piece of cardboard scrap I just put it over there 
to help kind of secure it in place so we don't pull it off while we're attaching it. I'm gonna put it on the front side and then pull those pipe cleaners through and wrap it around the base. Or that kind of that middle section, the um, branchy part, the wired part of that tree. And flip it back over and it looks nice. Now, when you're doing that, if you tighten it too tight, it's gonna sink down and press your, the sign down into it. You don't want that. You want it to look like it's floating above there, right? That gives a better look. And so now we're gonna add those picks. That's so easy to do. You're just gonna slide them in that little space where it's attached in the back. Just slide those branches right in there. If you can't find these at your Dollar Tree, just go get a stick out of the yard and spray paint it. Easy enough, right? A little black spray paint, perfect. Okay, so for this tubing, I think I called it deco tubing, but I'm not really sure what it is. You're just going to take this and overlap it over and over and over again. And I think I end up with like five loops on each side. You can see it's really easy, not a big deal. Kind of fluffing it out to see what I've got. I think it is five. And then when I get enough on both sides, I'm gonna make it kind of, you know, thick and bunchy and I'm gonna trim it off. Then I'm going to take another little section to just secure it, you know, tied around the middle so that everything stays together. Really easy to do. I got mine thrifted, but you can definitely find this type of thing at Dollar Tree. It might not be black and white, but you can definitely find it there. It doesn't really matter what color it is, right? Because you're going to do your own thing. You don't have to copy exactly what I have, right? And I love this. That is a cute little bow, right? All right, so now I'm just going to take a floral pick, a little extra stick that I had. It might have been one, one of those little pumpkins we're on because it's wood. Yeah, that might be what it came from. And I'm just going to push it through the back of that knot, which is really tight. So it's secure there, but you can add a little cool temp glue there if you wanted to, or some super glue to hold it in place. You don't want anything melting. And then I'm just going to feed it down behind, and it's going to stick right down in that frame. Then I'm going to add some hot glue to the back. In the same situation as before, take a little scrap paper or cardboard and put over the top of the glue spots. That way you can secure it and continue on with your project rather than waiting for that to dry. Okay, you can fluff out your little curls a little bit and then start adding down whatever type of ornaments you want. You can use table scatter here. You can use the little miniature pumpkins here if you want to. You can use any color in any size that you like. And these little mini ornaments are perfect. To me, in my opinion, they're perfect for this. I'm just gonna add these here and there in the little rolls and also in the branch to give a little more interest. Like decorating a Christmas tree. You just put them here and there, wherever you like them. Now I wanna make him a bow tie because he looks regal to me with that top hat. So we're gonna make a bow tie. I'm just gonna use some of this darker orange ribbon. This actually came from the fall section in Dollar Tree. I'm gonna bunch it in the middle. Real easy, you can see how I do that. And then while I'm making the centerpiece, I'm just gonna clip it together. I'm gonna to roll this over and flatten it. This is gonna go over the center of the bow. So you're just gonna place it on the front flip it over you gotta kind of manipulate it just a bit to make sure you get the placement right and then adding a little bit of glue protect your fingers protect your fingers press this down and then clamp it in place so that it can dry now what i'm doing now is i added some hot glue in the hole up there and i'm just covering it with some black um, with a black marker so it kind of fades into the back and you don't see the hole so much now to put his bow tie on, I'm going to use a craft stick, glue it on, and then we're just going to glue it right to the back of the sign. Perfect. It almost looks like it's floating there now. So I mixed up a little dark orange paint to go over this glitter because I noticed that the glitter was kind of um, sparse in some areas and it just gave it kind of a cheap look. And I want to give it a little bit of a more of a high end look, you know. So I'm just gonna go over it with that paint and make it look solid and the same color. And I think it looks great. It's almost exactly the same color as his bow tie. 
Then we're going to go around here with a little bit of this trim, just around the hat band. Look at that pop. So I've got some rhythm, ribbon here. Some of it is thrifted and some is from Dollar Tree. You know, just whatever pretty fall colors you like. I have a little scrap of foam and some floral wire. I have a, a, a foliage pick here that it's gonna coordinate with my beautiful dahlia. And this was thrifted. And then I have some of these pretty picks too that were thrifted. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous picture frame that I thought would be perfect for a fall project. So we are going to use this as our base. So normally a picture frame has these little, some type of uh, hooks or little switches or whatever you want to call them that actually close the backing on and the glass in so that it doesn't come loose. But since we don't have those pieces, we're just going to glue them down and get them out of the way. All right, so now I'm going to decide where I want to put my picks. I think you could use some wheat picks from Dollar Tree and those be beautiful here. Just anything that you can find, you can use Dollar Tree or thrift it or take something old apart and use it. So I think I want it to go this way, kind of an L shape. I'm going to trim down that piece of foam just into a smaller section so that it will sit right here on my frame. Now at first I decided to wire this down. So I took my floor wire and I just wrapped it through the openings in the frame and just decided to go around the foam. Problem with this is it doesn't sit flat because the frame has so many little divots and bumps and indentions in it. So I decided to just use my glue gun and just put a little bit of glue here and there. I did not use Gorilla Glue because I want to be sure I can clean this up and take it off to use it again later. But if you want yours to be permanent, you could use Gorilla Glue here or some type of a super glue. Okay, so I have trimmed down my little picks that are going to be our first layer. I'm going to put the first one right in the top. I want it to be a little bit higher than the frame or level with the frame, whichever way you choose. And then I'm going to take this one, going to find the pretty side, and then I'm going to put it right along the bottom of the frame. And I like how it kind of spills downward. It's really pretty to me. So I want to use these green leaves from this flower and the head of this pretty flower on this project. Just going to pull it apart. Okay, take those little pieces of greenery and just poke those right in the foam. If you don't have any pieces of greenery with your flower, not a problem, just grab some leaves. Whatever leaves you find that you like, just use those there. Then I'm going to cut down my foliage pick and I want to cut these in a varying uh, amount of heights. So some will be short and some will have longer stems. Starting toward the top, I am going to add one pick right in front of where we put our first picks down. And then I'm going to take another one and go kind of in an angle. So top left and then bottom right. And then I'm going to put a taller one right up top. You'll see just a second what I did here. I'm going to pull it down for you right here you can see it's kind of at an angle gives a little interest and then I'm just going to continue to go around so now I'm in the other bottom corner I like these because they have those little like dried seed pods look like little seed pods to me but anything with acorns or berries would be really pretty as well use what you have so continuing along, I'm just going to add these in where I feel like they look good. I don't want to lay anything completely flat. You can bend your wire. That's totally fine. That helps give you a little height so that things aren't just completely flat. Then I'm going to add some hot glue and press down on the foam. And because this is this foam, uh, it doesn't really stick that well with glue. It tends to melt. So I'm just going to take some of these pins that I have and I'm just going to kind of Press those down into the foam to help secure the glue and the foam together. 
just pressing into that plastic underneath and the base of the flower and that's going to help hold it in kind of at an angle like you would do hairpins my video schedule is mondays and thursdays at 5 p.m central standard time now we're going to work on the bow for this i'm using my bow maker that i made myself i'll link that video for you if you'd like to try to make your own and I'm just going to take this wired ribbon. That's the important thing here. You want wired ribbon for this kind of a bow. I'm going to flip it over so that the pretty side is always facing upward. I just kind of fold it in half, put those two wired edges together and slide it down. It seems to work best for me when making my bows. And I'm just going to make sure that both of these loops in the bow are the same length. I'm going to do this regular speed for you so you see how long it takes me to do it. So if you do it and it takes you a while, don't worry about it, right? We're not perfect here, and we're not trying to be perfect. We're just trying to craft something beautiful, right? Okay, so I have one tail down, one tail up. I'm going to trim it off. Then we're going to go to the next ribbon. I want to sandwich that beautiful Dollar Tree ribbon right in the middle. And you can see here, I'm going to check the ribbon out to see if there's a, a better side. And both sides are the same. So I don't have to twist anything here. All I have to do is put those wired edges together, slip it down in there, and then press it down. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Fold it over, and then press it down. Now, the loops on this bow are going to be about an inch shorter than the loops on the bow underneath it. As we add layers of bow, we're gonna get them shorter and shorter. And so here's the last one. I've sped it up because it's the same exact thing as the bottom one. I'm gonna flip it over, keep that pretty side up, pinch it together, pull it through, making sure that it's a little bit shorter than the other one. You see the layers there, a little step down. Twist it in the middle, holding it still, and then we're gonna do the next loop. You can also buy um, bow maker tools on Amazon and I do believe I have one linked in my Amazon store so if, there, if you're looking for anything that I show here on my videos you're most likely to find them there if not let me know and I'll be glad to help you I'm gonna take a zip tie squish it in underneath the bottom zip it up tight trim it off and then cut my dovetails for some reason today my dovetails were not behaving every time I would make a cut they were rounding off. I don't know what was going on. Same thing happened here. I cut it just a bit too short. But you see how easy it is to fix that? No big deal. So now, my favorite part is fluffing the bow. I'm just going to start pulling the loops apart, pulling the tails apart. I've sped it up a little bit because, you know, y'all probably know how to do this part. But it really makes a difference in the way the bow looks. If you just leave it flat, you're just not going to have the same presentation that you would otherwise. All right, so now we know that the bow should go here and I'm gonna use this little floral pin. I'm gonna stick it through the back of my ribbon right by that little zip tie. And then I'm just going to press that up into the bottom of the foam and you can secure that with a little bit of glue there if you would like. So I'm pressing it in and then fixing my bow back up because I squished it. I used the fluffing all during the process of making my bow, all during the process. I just like to do it. I like the way the material feels and I like the way it looks. It's just primping, making it pretty, right? And so at this point, you can go ahead and trim your tails a little shorter if you want. They don't have to be the same length. Go ahead and make some shorter, some longer. It gives extra interest and texture. And that's always a nice thing when you're making projects. It gives something more for your eye to dance around, right? Very easy. Move it around however you like it. This is how it's going to look. Now there's a sawtooth hanger on the back, so you can just let it, just hang it with that. The next project is an embroidery harvest wreath, or hanger, whatever you want to call it. So I got some of this beautiful red truck and pumpkin harvesty looking fabric from Dollar Tree. I have a little stick from Dollar Tree, or a little piece of branch, and then I got this thrifted embroidery hoop. 
and I'm going to, this is 10 inches, just so you know for your reference. It will most definitely fit a piece of this fabric. In fact, a 12 inch will also um, fit this fabric. So I'm just going to unscrew it a little bit and I'm going to press it down. I pull the wrinkles out before I get it completely tight so that it's nice and taut there. And then once it is screwed down tightly, I'm going to take some very sharp scissors. I like to lay mine completely on their side against the frame so I get a nice close cut. And I'm just going to go all the way around and trim that fabric off. Using the corner of the fabric is going to allow us the opportunity to use this fabric for something else. We'll have plenty more left. So once it's done, I'm going to embellish the top and I'm taking some leaves, just showing you that I'm looking to see which ones I like best for color. Then I'm going to trim them off and glue them down on the wooden block part of the top. I'm going to use the same colors on the bottom. Then the next two colors that I add on the left and right will be the same color. This is not important, but if you want to know what I'm doing, this is how I'm doing it. And then I'm going to add the lighter color ones last and at a different position. Okay, so now let's make a ribbon. We're going to use some hula skirt and some ribbons. Use whatever you like. We're going to use seven inches. I'm going to use two strips of seven inch. These are wired rimmed, but it doesn't matter, or wired edge, wired rim. We're not talking about glasses, are we? And then these don't have wire. I'm going to cut four pieces of those two smaller ones, and then I'm going to cut about seven inches of a handful of this. And then we're going to start making a little stack bow here, a little stack messy bow. I'm going to put these bigger ones on the bottom, and then start adding this hula skirt. This is a very economical way to get that straw or hay look. Um, without spending a lot of money buying little packages and it lays nice and straight it's very easy to work with so then I'm gonna keep on you don't have to do this in any type of a pattern it can be just willy-nilly grab whatever you want but you know like I've said before it's my brain it's how my brain works so this is what I'm doing but you can do it your way you can choose whatever type of ribbon you want. You can do a different bow if you like, but these messy bows to me are like perfect for harvest and fall because they just look so outdoors and they just remind me of harvest. Okay, now you're gonna take some of that jute. You're gonna pick up that stack from underneath. Just kind of hold on to it, pick up that thick ribbon on the bottom and then tie a couple of knots in the jute. If your ribbon starts to curl up on you, don't worry about it, just fix it. Just go ahead and fix it before you tie the second knot. Sometimes they'll overlap and flip around when you're trying to tie up. That's not a problem, especially with this type of bow. Then you can start fluffing up, pulling around, giving you some dovetails. You can cut them at a slant. You can leave them completely straight. You can cut some of these a little shorter than others, and you can take the opportunity to give it a haircut. You just trim down so everything looks about the same. This is a cute little messy bow, isn't it? I love it. And once I get it the way I like it, I am gonna fluff it a little bit more, and then I can tie it to the top. You can make yours a little bit shorter if you don't wanna cover your leaves up so much. So we had seven inch pieces, you could certainly do six or five inches if you wanted to make one smaller. I'm just going to go around this groove that is in there that holds this frame together and tie this bow right in the middle. And then using that same tail from that knot, I'm going to go ahead and make another knot. And this is how we're going to hang it. Just like that. And you can trim it off. So now you can just fluff it out and shag it up. And I want to go back now that I have it on and add a couple more leaves to just kind of extend that shape down instead of having it look like, you know, a ball on top of a ball. So now, I think the shape's a little bit better. And I want to add a little something right in the middle. And since we're working with pumpkins, let's grab up some little mini Dollar Tree pumpkins, whatever type that you like. Here's a couple 
and I'm going to just cut one of these so that it lays flat. I'm going to cut it where the, I still have the stem on it. So I'm cutting like maybe a third of, of it off and just using my little utility knife here and then cutting that right off. Then I can add my hot glue and put it down in the center. You can skip this step or you could use a button or you could put a flower here or you could put another leaf here or whatever you like. Even a pine cone if you wanted to. So now I'm going to take that piece of branch that came from Dollar Tree in a bag and I am going to put that right on top of that wood. It sits right there on top of that block perfectly. And there you have it. The first project is going to be a Halloween wreath. We're going to start off with an 18 inch Dollar Tree wreath. We're going to have some deco mesh. This is the 12 inch and some pipe cleaners. Some of these berry picks, ornaments of whatever color you like, whatever size, and some ribbon. We're going to start off by prepping this wreath. So I'm going to take my pipe cleaners. You can see I'm not wearing my glasses here. Couldn't see where I was going. And I'm going to twist one pipe cleaner around each of the little crossbars. You want to go around it so that it doesn't slip up and down. So you're going to go across. You can see clearly what I'm doing here, I believe. And then you're going to continue all the way around. Then we're going to start on the outer ring. We're going to go on the outside middle and twist it around and you can see it moves a little bit. You can use a dot of hot glue um, on the cool temperature on your gun so that you don't burn yourself or use your finger protectors. And we're going to do that for each of these little sections on this wreath frame. Continuing around. And so we have the, I think we end up with about 16 of these all the way around. Yep, 16. So now I'm gonna start with my deco mesh. If you don't have the really, uh, the 12 inch and you just have the smaller ones like from Dollar Tree, just be sure that you layer them up and then you'll have a thicker, wider piece to work with. So I'm gonna take a little section, bunch it up in my hand, place it down in between, starting off on that inside ring here or it's the center ring, but we're going to call it the inside because we are going to start our, we only are using the inside and the outside of our wreath. So on the inside, we're going to go around and make nine or 10 inch poofs here. So I'm just using my ruler underneath to give me a guide to see how big I want these poofs to be. And I'm going to continue around just on the inside, just like this. Just takes a couple of twists just be sure that you're pushing it all the way down so that when you are making the next poof you don't pull anything loose just a couple of twists gonna go around and do the same thing i can see through my mesh here and i can see my ruler underneath there's probably an easier way to do this i've seen people use their cutting mats to measure and that's a perfect idea but I have paint all over mine right now, so we're going to do it this way. Maybe you don't have a cutting mat. Just grab your ruler and you can do it like this. We need options, right? We need options so we have no excuse not to craft. All right, so we're going to go back around. And when we get back to the beginning part, I'm just going to unwrap it and put that poof right on top. You can see I'm using my middle fingers there to push it down to make sure it stays down in there. Now we're going to move our mesh to the outside. And again, I'm using my ruler as my guide. You're going to do a 9 or 10 inch poof, whatever size you prefer. The bigger the poof, the larger the reef is going to be in the end. 
continue around make another poof and I just kind of tuck my edges underneath a little bit and that helps that poof to stand out tighten that one down in there and just keep going I hope you can see what we're doing here all right now so we're back to the beginning and I'm just going to cross over that area where I started. I'm going to start poofing that stuff out, moving that stuff around, closing your gaps if anything moved around. That's why gluing those pieces down, those pipe cleaners down, can be helpful. All right, so then I wanted to use this. I got this at the thrift store, and I wanted to use this to kind of go across the top. But it's so tightly wound, when I put it down, and you can just, you know, we're going to use this one just on the outside of the ring, of the wreath, on the outer ring. There we go. Um, it had such a beautiful curl. I thought, you know what? Let's just go with this curl. It's something different. I've never seen it before, and I've never done it before. So we're going to leave this in a curl. We're going to let this thing do what it does. And I have to say, it reminds me of my hair. I have curly hair, or wavy combination whichever one sometimes I like to leave it curly and let it do its thing and sometimes I like to straighten it but right now we're gonna go with the curl right it's plenty of humidity in the south where we live we're gonna let this thing have its curl so I'm just gonna continue around and I'm not measuring here because I'm just using my poof as a guide to see how far I want this to go if you don't like the curls you don't have to do it this way you know you can straighten it out but I think it gives it a little more interest and dimension. And like I said, it's different than I've ever done before. So I like it. It's good to try new things, you know, and to bring you new things. So you're gonna continue around like this and the curl will stay in there if you just loosely move it, you know, instead of trying to pull it tight. And you can see what it looks like. Now this is pre-puff. I have not gone through here and fluffed it out yet. Now we're gonna start with our ribbons and I chose this, this is like a fabric ribbon. It might even not even be ribbon, it may be something else, but I got it at the thrift store and I thought this beautiful black and white stripe would be gorgeous on this wreath. I love a vintage look and this screams vintage to me with all the black, white, and orange. So we're gonna go with it. I'm just going to put my wired ribbon underneath and this on top. Now this has no wire, but that is not gonna be a problem in this situation because the poofs that are on the form of the wreath actually help give body to the ribbon and hold it in place and you'll see what I mean shortly so if you don't have wired ribbon you can definitely um, just go ahead and use what you have I'm going to go back and forth so now I started on the outside I went to the inside I'm gonna go to the next pipe cleaner set on the outside I'm gonna bunch this up and I'm doing about 9, 10 inches, the same thing as the poofs that are underneath. So they're all about the same size. And I'm going to twist that around tightly. And then I'm going to jump back over into the inside and put it on the inside of the wreath. And then I'll go back to the outside, inside, outside, inside, all the way around. If you run out of ribbon, let me show you what you can do. So I ran out of ribbon here. I'm just gonna lay the new piece on top of the old piece, overlap it, put my ribbon back on top, and then twist it around. And when it's underneath, you barely even notice it. You won't even notice in the end that I ran out of ribbon. So you just continue to go around here. I'm gonna start back where I left off and go to the inside. When I get back to my original spot, I am going to go ahead and trim it down to make it a little more manageable and I cut it at about, I think I had it at about 12 inches so that I would have plenty to lock in with my pipe cleaners here. And then I still have my 9 or 10 inch poof and I have enough to close up in the pipe cleaner. So I hope that makes sense. I think that what I say, if it doesn't make sense to you, that watching it will make a little more sense. And I'm just going to trim this off at a little bit of a slant. All right, so now you can go around and poof everything out and pull your ribbons apart. Now, we're gonna pull a stripe and then a solid, a solid and then a stripe, a stripe and then a solid, a solid and a stripe. And we're gonna continue this all the way around. And it's gonna look like this is woven all the way through the wreath, and I love it. 
very pretty. And I'm so glad that I did use that ribbon. Um, you can see it standing up nicely on its own, even though it doesn't have any um, wire in it. Still standing up nicely. Moves around just as easily as the wired ribbon that is underneath it. And this orange was actually from the Easter, um, the Easter selection that was put out. But you can use whatever kind of orange you have. Um, and I'm sure you can find some orange this time of year with fall and Halloween. So I know that I'm going to use a sign and this is the one I chose from Dollar Tree. Love these colors. I got it last year and had put it aside. I'm going to cut the hanger off because we don't need it. I'm going to cut a couple of strips of paper. We're going to use hot glue and we're going to make something to attach this to the wreath. So adding a little hot glue and then placing this down. This will help keep it from popping off the back when you are trying to tighten it up on your wreath and secure it in the wreath. Continue around till you got all four corners done. And then these are the ornaments that I chose and I'm just popping them out to see where I want to place them and to make sure that I have enough. And I actually do have enough. I did try some orange ones um, before this, but I did not like the way that they looked. So with the pipe cleaners that are left, if you do not want those, you can cut them off. You can wind them back into the wreath, whichever way you want. But I like to curl them around my finger and leave them because it looks like another little spooky element, like little spider legs or bug legs or snakes coming out of here or worms, whatever. I like it. I'm going to leave it. But the ones on the outside of the wreath, be sure you tuck those under. If you don't want to curl them on your finger, you can certainly use like a screwdriver, a pencil, something like that, and twist around on that. All right, then I'm going to leave these tops on the wreath because they, I mean, on the ornament, <laughs> because it will help tuck them down in the little crook there. And I am going to add some hot glue and then just press it down. I'm going to hold it down because the wreath, it tries to kind of push back up because it's, you know, it's thick. It's a bouncy wreath. And I'm going to keep adding my glue. Now these ornaments are actually uh, glass ornaments, uh, so they're breakable, but use plastic if you would like. Uh, what I love about these particular ornaments is that they don't have a seam on them like some of the plastic ones do, and it gives, uh, to me, a more expensive look, you know, a higher end look. But you can see that some have gold tops and some have silver tops. They were all collected uh, at the thrift store over the past year. I just grab things when I think I can use them. I see them and I... I think I can use them in a project, so I'll go ahead and grab them. And so far, this is how it looks. Isn't that pretty? And then here's how our sign will go on it, right in the center. So I'm going to just push those little uh, hanging pieces or my little pipe cleaners to the back. And I'm going to center it and then flip it over. And then I can just reach in there and fish out my wires and go right around the two inside rings and I'm doing about an inch and a half up. Now, if you do inch and a half up on each one of these, then your wreath will be nicely positioned on the top without any corners poking down or looking lopsided. So just try to make sure you have the same amount on each corner. I love it. Love it. And I love that you can actually get all your supplies from Dollar Tree if you wanted to. Yes, true enough, some of mine are thrifted, but that's okay. You can definitely get what you need at the Dollar Tree if you don't have a good thrift store. So just fluffing again to make sure that everything looks nice. And I want to add a little more. So Dollar Tree has berry picks and they have these little, I don't know if they're cupcake picks that are like pumpkins and things, but I love these as little, I love these as little beads. So I'm going to save these to use on the ribbon and I'm going to use some wood slices or half wood beads to use to cover up the holes and to put in a couple of other places on the sign so that it kind of looks like it's tacked down. So I just put them here and there. I definitely need them on the top to cover those holes up. And then just wherever else you feel like you have a little extra space. Then I am going to take one of these pieces. Each of these little picks have a wire on the back. I just cut off the wire and then I'm gonna add some hot glue and put it on each little loop of the black and white ribbon. I love that. It looks whimsical to me. And just enough orange in there. I love the vintagey colors, but you could also argue that this is farmhouse. If you would like, I think it is 
stunning. You could add lights if you wanted to. You could change your ornaments to a different color, whatever you like. The first project is going to be a fall broom decor piece. You could almost call this a swag if you wanted. We're going to start with some Dollar Tree leather tags. I have some thrifted flowers, so I have this beautiful cream colored hydrangea and some more of these other pretty rust colored flowers. And then I have this pick that I thrifted, but you can definitely use a couple of picks from Dollar Tree. This one is really, really thick, very pretty. And then this is a thrifted broom that I got from Goodwill. All right, so this is 36 inches. We are going to cut this pick down into smaller pieces. So this will kind of give you an idea. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You get about eight little pieces out of here. You would probably need two or three of the Dollar Tree picks to do this, and you can use whatever you like. If you want to use leaves, you can use leaves, you can use grasses, or whatever you like. I'm going to cut apart the flower picks. You want to leave a little bit of branch on there or stem on there because we're going to be using it to attach it to the wreath. We're going to start with this grass piece right into the center top of the wreath. Then I'm going to put one on each side. The broom itself is kind of thin and small, and that's okay. We're going to beef it up with all this beautiful colored grass. You can even go on the inside and push it up into there. Now, because the broom is so tightly packed underneath where you can see the little braid in the top right corner, these pieces will stick in here just fine if you're going to use this in the house. So you don't have to glue it down unless you're making it to sell it. And just continue along till you get that as thick and full as you like. And I love this, and I love that it extends beyond the, the wooded part of the broom, or the little stems of the broom. I love it. And now we're going to move to the upper part of the same little sweeping part of the broom. I'm going to go right above the little, the braid, or the, um, you see the line where the thread is? I'm going to go right above it with one of those picks and kind of push it to the side. Now it's on wire. So it makes it easy for you to give a little bend to your pieces. Same thing with the Dollar Tree picks. They're on wire, so you can bend them. And if anything pops off, generally, you can just pop it right back on there. So no worries about that. Now I'm going to put this other one on the left a little bit lower down than the one on the right, just to give a little bit of interest. I'm going to take the stem of this hydrangea and make a hook. Then I'm going to lay it down on the broom and push it upward. So you can see here how we did that. I have pushed it upward. Now I'm going to take the leaves and push them up on these flowers so that they can be seen. I'm just adjusting my petals a little bit. If you get a piece from the thrift store and it's kind of wild looking, you can always use a little hot glue to arrange your petals and to make it look um, tighter instead of, you know, opened up so much. Whatever you like. But I love these just the way they are. And I'm just going to put it on the bottom side and press it upward just like I did the other one. We're going to do that with all of the flowers. You're going to give it a little crook behind the back part. And then just arrange your leaves once you get them pushed up. This is not symmetrical and there's no certain pattern to this. I love these colors. I knew I had to use the broom when I saw these beautiful colored flowers. They're so nice. And then the little bud, I'll put it right to the side. Sometimes you have to move it around a little bit um, to make sure that you get it in a tight part of the broom. You don't want anything falling out. So now I'm going to add just a little tag here. And I got out of camera range. I apologize. Y'all know my process. But I'm just adding hot glue and I'm just going to put it down on the base of the broom. And then push the little string part the leather string part just up on the inside where you can't see it. You can cut it off if you want. 
or use it for another project. And this is how this little beauty looks. Love this. This will not be taken apart. This is going to be put right in my house. Perfect piece of fall decor, I think. All right, so the next project is gonna be a witch hat. We're gonna have her a hat to match her boots. So we're gonna go back to felt here, grab you some felt. I've laid my hat upside down on it and I am working on the back side of the frame. Again, leaving the tinsel on, it gives it a little more body and you're not gonna see any of that afterwards. So I'm just going to cut where I need and I'm going to twist around where I need to twist around. I'm going to cut little darts there in the side so that I can wrap around the little edges of the brim of the hat. Because they have a little curve, I want them to keep that curve so I'm going to get them out of the way. And then I'll fix it, make it look a little bit better in a little bit. But for this part, we're just going to start working on the tall part of the hat. I'm going to add some hot glue on the frame and then just pull it over. You can glue and trim as you go. You do not have to cover this entire back, but I'm gonna show you how you can do it if you want it to look nice and neat. Because you can leave the this actual wreath like this, or you can do the second step, which I will show you in just a minute. So be sure you stay tuned so you can see what else you can do to give it a little more dimension. Okay, so you just want to finish this back off. And like I said before a couple of times, you can pull on this felt and it's a little stretchy. It has a little give. So continuing around, I'm going to trim off what I don't need. Just a little on that, ex on that side that's extra that's just getting in the way. And what's on this side, I'm just going to kind of roll under. It gives it a little more thickness and I like that. Then I can just roll it instead of cutting it and go right over to the edge that we've already glued down. And it's, see how it's nice and flat on the back? I like that. And by the way, I don't mind that the little bumps are showing. Um, those little bumped areas on the sides are where the tinsel is attached down to the frame. That's how they make these wreaths at Dollar Tree. So again, trimming off. I don't want anything too bulky on the end because I want to keep the taper on the end of the hat. That's one thing that I think is so cute in a witch's hat is that point. And since this one has a curve in it, I want to make sure that the the little curve is a natural nice taper going downward, not with a big gap in the middle. But if it does happen to you, I'm going to show you how to fix that as well. So we're going to keep going down here. Now, everything is fixed on the back part of it and we're going to work on the curved part of the hat. I am just going to pinch it and then glue it down. I'm going to pinch it and roll it and then glue it down until you get a nice point on it. I wanted to leave this in here so you could see exactly how to do this because in some of the last parts of what we're making, uh, embellishing this, it's really important that we have a nice crisp point on the end. So keep watching so you can see what to do. Okay, this is it so far. You see I got my little points right, same way I did on the top of the hat is how I did the little ones on the bottom. But you see on the top it has a little gap. We're going to fix that. So I'm pulling a thicker piece of this. So you're probably going to need two rolls of felt. Yeah, you're going to need two rolls. I think I just said a roll, but go ahead and grab two. And then I'm going to start twisting this like I did on the boots gonna glue it on the back side on the bottom and then just start working my way around because we're not we're gonna put something on the bottom of this hat you're not gonna see where it starts the fold so I'm gonna begin to twist and 
I am going to leave some wrinkles and dimples in the fabric as I go along. This is the part where I'm saying you could, you could leave it and not wrap this part on there or for additional interest, I would think, for me, um, you're just going to go ahead and wrap another piece on top of it. You're going to squeeze it, you're going to flip it, you're going to leave some wrinkles in it, you're going to make some little gathers. You see here how there's little areas that are kind of gathered and you're going to make sure that if you do a like a pleat or a gather that you do most of it to the right side because you're going to be curving to the right so we're going to keep going to the right flip it up and you want it to get more and more narrow as you go toward the top see I'm going to continue here going to go around grab a little pleat there I've pleated it again and continue around but you see the tip looks weird on my hat there's a gap between the end of the wreath body that's under there and then the additional length that I added by putting on the felt to the end of it because I wanted it to be a little bit longer we're gonna fix that you can either fix it at this point which I did not do um, I don't know what I was thinking when I did this part of it, but I couldn't quite get the angle right. So I went ahead and glued it down. And then I'm going to take another piece of fabric. Now this one, the piece of fabric that I'm going to use next is a square that I cut and then I folded the square in half to make it look like a triangle. So it's a doubled triangle. Okay, so that's what you're looking at here. I'm going to put it underneath and then kind of sandwich it or wrap it around. Now I'm gluing it on the back side, not on the front. Remember, we want it nice and neat on the front. Put all of your hard work on the back. In just a minute, you'll get to see what that looks like. Now we're going to do a little swag or some decoration for the front or the brim of that beautiful witch's hat that we have created. I've got thrifted and Dollar Tree pieces. Look at these beautiful purple leaves from Dollar Tree. Now on my camera, from my angle, it looks like it's coming off the flowers and the greenery is a little on the bluish side, but they're beautiful purple. So these are thrifted, these little pieces of, I believe that's eucalyptus, maybe. They're thrifted, but you can get something glittery, glittery, glittery or similar to it, you know, at Dollar Tree. Whatever you choose to put here. Here's the beautiful purple flowers and this kind of a two-tone purple flower. I love that it has the little cone in the center of it. It just, I don't know, it just looks witchy to me. Look at this. This is called Farmhouse Witch Hazel. I was able to find out of 12 stores, about three picks in different colors. But isn't it gorgeous in this arrangement? I also used some on a pumpkin that I did recently for fall. That turned out really pretty. So I'm gonna take a zip tie or you can use a pipe cleaner, whatever you have here. Zip tie is going to hold it nice and tight and it makes it easy so you don't have to keep picking it up and putting it down. You're going to cinch it all the way to in the middle. Clip off the excess. And then I'm just kind of, you know, fluffing. I fluff my arrangements like I fluff my bows here. And then I have these little, they look like little, I don't know, like a little berry. I don't know what these are. But again, they look kind of spiky and they look kind of witchy to me, so I thought they were nice in here. And I think it's going to fit nice right across the bottom. So now we're going to work on the ribbon. And the ribbon is purple, although it looks kind of blue. That velvet ribbon comes in a three foot roll, so I went ahead and cut each of these two into three foot pieces as well. And then I'm just going to cinch it up. These are all wired in the middle. And don't worry if you didn't catch that. I'm going to let you see on the other two strips of ribbon exactly what I do again. I'm just going to clip that off. Then I'm going to take another piece, and this one's going to be in the center, cross it over itself, pinch it up in the middle. This is really good quality um, for a Dollar Tree ribbon, really, really good quality. I'm going to take the next one, and it's sheer with spider webs, and the other one is black with white spider webs. Pinch that one up in the middle too. 
and grab up the rest of my ribbon just stack them all on top of each other and these are all roughly the same size now using my pipe cleaner I'm gonna twist it around the middle I'm gonna use a pipe cleaner this time because I'm going to need something to attach this down to the little swag that we made and I'm gonna do it very tightly because I have to flip this bow so I am pushing down and twisting over the little chenille stem I'm going to trim up a little bit on these edges or the ends of the ribbon to me this is an important part of making your bows and I'm not gonna do it fast I'm gonna show you what it looks like that it does take me some time to do things to I don't have superpowers well through the power of editing I have superpowers superpowers but I don't have any personally so you're gonna trim this off you could also do a dovetail if you like the way that that looks. And I'm going to just continue to move my ribbons around and move my bow pieces around so that I can fluff it out and make it look beautiful. Now they're all about the same length and that's a good working length because once you get it down then you can trim it up if you want to trim it up more. There I am fluffing. Love my fluffing. And you can move those now. You've got them very tightly into that pipe cleaner. You can move them in any angle you like. To attach it down, I'm just going to flip my little greenery swag over on top of the back of my bow, and I'm going to tightly twist them together. You can leave it on or you can cut it off. It doesn't matter, whichever way you want to do it. And then I'm going to prepare to put it down. Look how pretty this is. I love it. So as I was fluffing, I noticed that for the size of my hat, I had a little too much going on down here. Just too much length in the ribbon. So I decided to cut a couple of pieces to look more like little flyaways. And make it a little more... Hmm, I don't know. To make the size a little bit better, I guess is what I'm saying. So I'm now I'm going to take a little piece of, uh, this is like a cotton cord, and I have it threaded through an upholstery needle. I'm going to go through the back of the hat over the, as part of the plastic edge of it, I guess you could say. And then I'm going to go through the back of my arrangement, right up through the middle, and then go underneath it. And then you can wrap it a few times if you want to, but mine held into place fine right here. And then I'm just going to tie this off in the back with a couple of knots to hold it in place. When you flip it back over, if you need a little more support, and it wouldn't be surprising with a bow that size to need more support, just add some hot glue and then press it into place and hold it there for a minute. Give it a little time to, to dry and then you'll be good to go. Then you can do all of that extra little fluffing that you like to do. All right, so I'm going to make something for the top. Now you see the taper is perfect. It's exactly how I wanted it. I'm going to start making a little, it's like a little, I don't know what you would call this. It's like a little mini, mini greenery piece, I guess. I'm going to use some black leaves and one of my purple leaves, one of these beautiful witch hazels with the little curl on it. And then I'm going to glue a little berry in the middle with a piece of wire. I'm going to glue it right to the tip let that dry and then I'm gonna glue it down on the leaf so that there's a little gap in between and look y'all once the glue cools of course look at this it can move I forgot to show you but I did actually put a spider on there that you will see in the end screen of the video so be sure that you stay to the very end to hang this I'm just going to use another piece of my pipe cleaners and I'm just going to glue it right down on the back of the hat and then you can hang it up from there once it's cool.
next is going to be a fall wreath. This is an 18 inch wreath. It's a little bit on the oval side, not completely round, but that's how it is with grapevine wreaths and stick wreaths. I'm gonna take some Dollar Tree embellishments as well as magnolias and the greenery that I got from the thrift store. Beautiful. These seed pods came from the thrift store as well. Pine cones, I have a variety of colors here because I'm not sure what I'm gonna use yet. These beautiful thrifted pieces. And I'm gonna start by fluffing out my greenery. Now these pieces have already been cleaned and wiped down, so I'm just gonna fluff them out. I'm gonna fix everything where it looks natural, as it would be on a branch. I'm gonna do the same thing with my floral picks. And if you have any dustiness on your leaves, like I'm showing you here, you can use a big brush. This is just a big paintbrush. Clean, of course, and dry and you can just dust these off. Get in between all your little petals and layers and down the stick and onto the greenery. And you can just very easily do this. Now she's beautiful. I'm gonna take my greenery picks and just pick those off, cut them off. And then I'm gonna use a glue stick. If you decide you want to put it outside, you need to use glue. But for me, it's going to be inside and I am not gonna be needing glue. Your picks will go down and stick quite nicely in this type of a wreath. So I'm just gonna start, I know that I don't want this to be uh, symmetrical and I want it to be thicker on the left side than on the right side. So everything's gonna be toward the bottom right. I'm gonna add in my next pick of Magnolia Greenery. And I'm just gonna press that in there I'm gonna work kind of toward the center at this point. Now this was thrifted and I didn't have enough stem on here. So all you have to do is take a stem off of something else or a skewer or something like that. Take some floral wire and just tightly wind that around. Once you get it as secure as you need it, you can trim it off. Tuck your wires down because you don't wanna be poking your fingers. You you don't want to do that. We don't want injuries while we're crafting, do we? We don't want anything to slow us down when we're in the flow. So I'm just going to take that now. It's going to work nicely, and I'm going to place it down. Perfect. So now the flowers can go in. I'm going to go to the top, and I'm just going to add my beautiful magnolia on this side. And I'm going to continue around and let you see how I do that. I don't want everything lined up on the top of the wreath. I want some things to be on the, kind of facing a little bit toward the outside and the bottom. And then we'll build slightly upward when we put in the next elements. So you can move your greenery around. You can pull some of those darker leaves through if you want. You can press some in the back. You know, it's on wire. These. Uh, a good quality florals. They'll be on wire so you can easily move these pieces apart. Then I had some that were just, they weren't on a bigger pick, they were just singular leaves. I'm just going to add those here and there. And continue along with my flowers. I love magnolias. We have three magnolia trees on our property and they are just beautiful. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the seed pods and you can see that I've bent it so that it will face outward and not straight up. I'm gonna cut it off to a manageable length and then go ahead and add those in. So I'm gonna add one right at the top. I'm gonna add one at the bottom sort of toward the center. And at this point when I'm doing a wreath or a project, I kind of, I go by feeling. I uh, don't really think about what I'm doing. There's really no rhyme or reason. I just keep adding in. It's like I kind of get in the zone. If you're a crafter, I, you probably know what I mean here. I just go with what feels right. If I put something down and I don't like it, I just move it. It's not glued in, so it, you know that makes it convenient at this point. 
I'm just continuing along here and there. Now I'm going to take those little picks from Dollar Tree and I'm going to put them in twos. Some will be single and some will be in twos and I'm just going to add those here or there. This is the part of the wreath that you could consider your flyaway. It's a little something to give it extra movement and interest. They're small. I love the colors. I love the colors in this wreath. This could if you didn't have the picks in there, it could probably be like a summer wreath. But the fact that we have those beautiful leathery looking brown leaves and all the brown from the seed pods, I think this is perfect for fall decor. Then you can just add in some of the little picks of um, pine cones or whatever you have that you like here and there. And I don't want to add a lot here, just a little bit for interest. And I think this turned out beautifully for fall. What do you think? I know magnolias bloom earlier in the year, and at this point they've pretty much gone to, um, to the seed pods now. But to put those in there like this, I think they look really nice. Next project is a moon wreath. Taking this Halloween sign from Dollar Tree, and I just recently found it, they're still putting out new stuff. I'm going to use this wire frame, a silver and a gray paint, some silver ribbon and black ribbon and black deco mesh, and some star ornaments. Pipe cleaners are what we're going to use to attach everything down. Now, do as I say, not as I do, except in this part. We're going to start by putting one around each of the crossbars in the sections. So right in the middle, right around the crossbar. I'm not sure if this frame came from Dollar Tree or from somewhere else, but it's all the same to me. All right, you see how I went to the outside ring? Don't do that. Go right back onto the same ring that you were already on, the same one, not the outside same one. All right, I'm going to pull the tag off here. I'm going to use a little sander here and just go over that area so it's nice and smooth. Again, we don't want little polka dots and stuff in here. I'm also going to go over all of the edges because it's kind of rough and not very finished looking. It's kind of choppy looking. So um, yours may be perfect, but this one needed a little work. So I'm just sanding over that to make it nice and smooth. I'm going to take this granite gray, which is a very light color and um, go over the sign. I'm going to leave it streaky. I'm not going to fill it completely in. I want it to you to be able to see some of that brown or the shadowing through there because the moon itself is um, not just a big ball. It's, you know, it's got crevices and deeper spots and higher spots and rough terrain and that's kind of what I'm going for in this. I'm going to go around all of the edges as well this is how it will look. You can watch my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Once it is dried, you're going to go back over with the silver. And the silver is, is a pretty light tone like the paint that I used underneath. Same process here. I'm going to leave it a bit streaky. I want to be able to see some texture. I want to be able to see some highs and lows. So I'm just going to do it like this. Now, if you choose to make a moon for yourself, but maybe you want your theme to be yellow and black, you can certainly do yellow and maybe use some gold to go on top. You can make this however you want to. My videos are just for inspiration. They are not to tell you what to do or that the way you do it is not right. Strictly for inspiration. I do what I like and then you can take the ideas that you like from it and go with it. Make it your own. I like it just like that. 
Now we're going to start on the deco mesh part. This is the easiest deco mesh wreath I can show you how to make. We're going to take 12 inch pieces of this deco mesh and we're going to make a whole bunch of them. We're going to make 12 times 3, so we're going to have 36 pieces of black deco mesh or silver or orange or whatever color you want to use. And then we're just going to roll it. Roll it, roll it, roll it until it is about the diameter of somewhere between a nickel and a quarter. You're going to pinch them together. I just use a clamp to help me hold everything while I make my bundles. I make all my bundles first. So we're going to put them in threes. And then once they're all done, and we should have 12 bundles. You can see the Dollar Tree mesh, it frays and little pieces come out. We're going to do the best we can with it. I could have shown you this wreath with a more expensive mesh, but I, am, I want to show you what it looks like with Dollar Tree so you'll know what you need to do to fix it if that's all that you can get. Okay, so everything is placed down on the wreath now, and we're going to move on to our ribbons. We're going to cut these in a dovetail, all of these in a dovetail. You're going to have 12 pieces of black, 12 pieces of silver, and then I decided to use this because I have not used it yet. This is a paper looking ribbon from Dollar Tree. It's darker on one side than the other, but I thought, you know, it looks like birch, but it also looks like the surface of the moon to me, so we're going to go with it. We're going to try it. We're experimenting here, right? Okay, so we're just going to do the same thing. I'm, I show you the same thing almost every single time I do this. Just going to make an X and lay one over the center, just like this. My black ribbon does not have any wire, but it's a good ribbon. I finally used the last of my roll, and I'm sad about that. But it is what it is in crafting, right? Okay. It had a good life. It had a good run. Okay, so now when I start pulling, do you see how that split? It split. This is not a paper, but it is a weird, I don't know. I don't even know, I, I don't know what the fabric is. But I said, okay, you know what? It split down the middle. I'm going to go with it. I'm just going to pull it. When I get it up there on my frame, I'm just going to pull it. And we're just going to make it look like it's two pieces instead of one. Right? When we get lemons, we make lemonade. Next little bundle, we're going to put it down right beside it. Never mind that ornament over there that just came out of the blue. We're going to fluff. I'm going to separate that ribbon just like that. Now it looks like it did it on purpose, doesn't it? You can turn it around. You can use the darker side. When it's all full, this is how it is going to look. I love that that silver ribbon looks like it has, you know, it's got the little round little circles in there so it sort of looks like it's already like the full moon I love it once you're done you can clip off the extra pieces of pipe cleaner just make sure that you've twisted down well so you don't pull it apart when you're fluffing and you can take all those off then you can fluff out your little ribbon stacks turn them here and there and now you have a nice full wreath rather than the kind of sparse looking wreath we had before and by the way I used two I believe I used two of those rolls of the mesh from Dollar Tree. And you just clip off the little pieces that are falling out. Now we need some way to put our moon down on the wreath. And I just try to get my position how I would like it. And I use the same technique every single time. Pipe cleaners with a little bit of hot glue. And then a little scrap of either paper or ribbon to go on top. Be careful about your fingers here. As I've gone along, I'm learning more and I know what I can and can't tolerate as far as heat on my fingertips. Yeah, but you be careful, of course. Now, uh, for my ornament, I'm just snipping off the ends because I don't need the hanger piece. And I can decide uh, where I want those to go after I place my moon down. So I'm just gonna take those pipe cleaners, feed them through the frame down there, and then flip it over You don't want to pull too tightly because you will sink it down into the wreath and that's not what I want to do. I want it to look as though it is floating on top. So I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to take the, the bottom part and feed that through as well. And then twist it around so that it stays in place. You could always cut off your extra if you want, but 
Nobody's looking at the back of my wreath, so I'm not concerned about that. Now we can put the stars down. So I'm going to take a little star and put it here, and a little star and put it there. And these stars came from the thrift store, but I'm almost certain you can get something like this at Walmart. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure you could get something like that. So I had four, and I'm going to take the fourth one, leave the little hanger on it, because we're going to hang it from the moon. Right from the tip of the moon. If I had a little black cat or something, I would sit it in the moon like I've seen on Pinterest, and that would be really cute, like the cat playing with the star. So certainly if you have something like that, it would be so cute in this wreath. But I didn't have it, and I'm working with what I have left of my supplies. But this is how it's going to look. By the way, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I am so happy to have you here. We're going to start off with a gorgeous fall floral swag and it has sunflowers y'all. We're going to take two of these Dollar Tree Christmas trees. I have a bunch of sunflowers here. Some of these picks. Some flowers. Just little clippings from what I had last year. Some more little random pieces. Some thrifted pieces. And then these also came from the thrift store. You can get as many picks and pieces as you would like from Dollar Tree, of course, that will be very similar. I'm going to take the two trees out of the box. We don't need the bottoms and legs. I'm going to overlap them so that their stems kind of go into one another. You'll start by pulling the tree apart, apparently, <laughs> by pulling the branches out and upward because we're going to be laying it down so it'll be flat then. I want to get two little spots available for me to put my zip ties on so that it will hold these tree trunks, if you will, together. So I'm going to just hold it tightly in one hand and go ahead and put this around one end. So this will be close to the end of one of them. And you're going to cinch that all the way down and then go to the other side of your little branches and wrap that around. I don't think I'm doing a very good job explaining it, but you can see what I'm doing here. Then you're just going to clip off the extra because we don't need that part. Now you can really do the part where you fluff everything out and move it around. So putting these two trees together, we're going to have a 24 inch swag, which is perfect. And I'm just going to pull the little branches to the side. And like you saw just a minute ago, sometimes they'll come off, but that's not a big deal. These are not really going to be something that's going to make this beautiful. This is something that's going to help us attach all of our florals down to the base. So this is just really our bottom. You won't see much of this whenever we're done. Continue to fluff out from side to side so that you have it flat on the bottom and pull each one of those apart. Sometimes they're kind of stacked together, just like those two. So just be sure you pull them apart because that's going to help you whenever you put your florals down. You'll have more little picks to, or little uh, tie areas to hold your, your products down, in other words. So this is what it's going to look like. It's thicker in the middle and more tapered on the ends. And then I'm just showing you here that we have about 24 inches. Maybe a little more. I'm going to start by just taking one of my wispier pieces and I'm going to put it in the background on one end. It's going to be overlapping just a little because I don't want the pine to necessarily show through. Pick another piece and put it down here. If you don't have something like this at home already, and maybe you have a thrift store that you don't particularly care for, take an old wreath or an old swag or an old garland that you already have and pull the pieces off. You can certainly reuse things that you've had in the past and repurpose them. 
I'm calling this a Dollar Tree product because you really can get everything you need from the Dollar Tree. Although some of my products that you see here are actually, you know, thrifted pieces. But you can get them at Dollar Tree. Something very similar. Okay, so you can see here I'm kind of going with the taper. And I'm just using the pine in the background to kind of give me my borders and my boundaries for where I am putting my pieces of this... I don't know if I want to call this a vine or what this is, this, these green pieces that I'm putting in. But I think the color is much better for fall than the bright green pine, of course. But you know pines are evergreens, right? So they're always going to be green and all year round they're always going to look the same, even in the fall. Yep. Okay, so you can see the shape that I got here directly pointing outward on each end and then at an angle crossed over on each end kind of moving inward a little bit and now working from the center I'm just going to add a piece here this is going to be pointing upward and I'm just going to wrap it you can see that these little wired pieces really help lock those greenery pieces down my videos are Mondays and Thursdays at 5 y'all now I'm going to start working with my pretty, I think these are oak leaves, yeah. I'm going to start putting these down. Now I said thrifted because I'm pretty sure this particularly, this particular greenery was from a thrifted wreath that I have, but it might not be because I had another wreath too that I repurposed that was something that I had had for years. So I'm not exactly sure because these had been pulled apart like this for years. I just used them again and again because I love the coloring in it. All right, so we're gonna use kind of the same pattern that we did when we put the other pieces down. And we're just gonna add our, our greenery or our leaves right on top of that. You're layering here, right? And I'm sure to make sure that the tips of the leaves are hanging over the edge of the swag. Now for some of you who are familiar with wreath making and swag making, you probably don't wanna see this in normal speed but it is helpful from the information I've been getting the feedback it is helpful for some people to be able to look a little bit longer and be able to see what I'm doing a little bit more thoroughly so I'm gonna do this um, in honor of those viewers and subscribers that need a little extra time so you can see how it's looking so far they always look terrible before they start looking good and I would say that this looks pretty rough right now these have little wired ends and then sometimes you can just kind of thread them through what's underneath if you're going to keep them inside. However, if you're going to be putting these outside, you should probably be adding a little bit of Gorilla Glue to the picks before you put them down or maybe putting a little Gorilla Glue over the areas where you have them pinned. Okay, you see, so this piece just came apart here. I'm just going to glue it back on. No big deal. That was easy enough, wasn't it? I'm going to take my other little pieces here and this is a different type but pretty much the same coloring I'm gonna add that I love the bright colors in this and I'm just gonna continue to put these around where I see that they need to be put but everything is kind of facing outward from the center that's what we want because we're gonna do something different in the center I'm gonna put these little berry pods and cut them apart in little pieces leaving enough stem for me to add glue so that I can place them down in there I know I'm kind of out of camera angle. Y'all, I gotta tell you, I do get out of out of um, the vision of the camera sometimes. Is because I consider myself an intuitive crafter, meaning when I get in the flow of something, all of the technical stuff just falls away, and I am exactly doing what I feel looks right, and I just kind of go with my gut. So that's kind of why I'm not like perfect with the camera, but you get what I'm what I'm talking about, right? You understand? I know a lot of people say that they craft that way too, so. Moving along, we're gonna start adding those beautiful sunflowers. I'm gonna add one to each end, and then I'll start adding the smaller ones because there were larger and smaller ones on the same pick. If that's not the situation for you and you have all one size, that is not a big deal. It will not matter at all. So now I'm gonna put the sunflower a little bit off from the center and we're 
beginning to work toward the center. You can see now, and the things in the center are going to be a little bit taller than what you have on the sides and on the ends. We're building it upward because this swag could actually be used as a centerpiece. Isn't that great? Two and one. Now I'm going to add in the little orange flowers. I like a variety of textures and sizes. Um, if you saw my last video where I did the really pretty wreath, um, yeah, I just, I just like a variety of textures and things. It's more interesting, I think, to me. And you want a little movement, you know? I think it's pretty. So this is a hot bush. I started off by pushing up after I, you know, they were cut off, pushing the leaves up to the top so they'll be seen. And I'm going to put these in threes on the top in two areas. So there's my first bundle of three. Over here, I'm going to add another bundle of three. Because I had so much orange and yellow going on there that I wanted to break it up with a little bit of this cream color. And then single here and on the other side. Then I'm going to take three of them together and put them right together in the center, either bottom or top, whichever way. And if you're hanging it, then it's going to be on the side. No big deal. Okay, so when you get to this point, you can go ahead and tuck under any of the greenery that you don't want seen from the pine. Just tuck that under. You can fold it, tuck it. You can add more greenery if you want to do that. So once you do that, you're going to have a little extra space. I just went ahead and used berry picks here. I'm going to take some of this. I believe it's called pitberry, pitberry vine. And you can get these in the little rounds at Dollar Tree. Almost every season they have them in different colors. These are gold. I took one strand of it, wound it around the end of a uh, tool, and just cut it in half. And I'm going to pull it out and just glue it down kind of out from where the sunflowers are. You'll see in just a minute. There you go. Just a little extra something. And you can do more of these or you can leave this out if you want to. And this is how it is going to look. Gorgeous. And it would be pretty if you flipped it over and did the other side or if you want to use it for you know a swag if you wanted to put it above your door you could do it that way you could use it in many positions and you could put it on your table it would be very pretty as well so if you decide that you do want to hang it as a swag we're going to use a little bit of burlap and I'll show you how to make that tie for the back very simple you're just gonna double up one piece pull the knot down where you want it and then you have your loop so this is a hanging loop flip it over and then you can just use the same little branches from that Dollar Tree Christmas tree and just twist it around, poke it down in there, twist it so that it will hang up. It's not heavy at all, so um, no worries about that. The next project is going to be a harvest wreath. And this wreath is going to somewhat match what we had going on in the box. So I'm going to take one of these grapevine wreaths. It is about an 18 by, I think, 15, yes. It's an oval, but you choose whatever shape you like. I'm going to use some of those same picks, cut them all off. I've got some of these little wheat grasses, and I think it's called amaranthus. I've got some of the beautiful leftover picks of eucalyptus and I'm just going to start adding these in. I love to use a grapevine wreath for autumn and for winter because it just looks more rustic and that's how I feel. Um, you know, I feel, I feel like the outdoors, the beautiful colors, they just really bring a nice textural element into your house and it's just warm and cozy when the weather starts getting cooler and I love to use them and they're really easy to use this poor wreath i've had forever you can see i've got jute tied around it to help keep its shape and um, the stems just go right down in there now this is something that you want to put outside you're going to need to use some glue on this you're going to need to use like a gorilla glue 
on the end of your picks to keep them all down. But since I recycle mine and use them, you know, over and over again, I want to be sure that I don't glue anything down. And the picks will stay in here pretty good on their own without having to use any glue at all. Y'all, sometimes when I'm doing wreaths, I take things apart and I put them back together. So I'll move stuff around, I'll look at it and decide that, you know, maybe I don't like it and I'll put it someplace else. But once you know for sure where you want it, then you can put your glue down if you want it to be permanent. Now, these little picks here, beautiful little picks that I thrifted, are actually three wound together. So always check, when you do this, you can save your money by breaking those pieces apart and spreading them out. What about that? Not a bad idea, right? Just always check and see. If they've got that little uh, paper around it, sometimes you can just peel that paper off and you'll see individual picks in there. Mm-hmm. Save your money where you can, ladies and gents. All right, so I'm gonna start by just placing some here and there. I'm doing the outside of the wreath and then I'm going to the inside. Look at that little bug. You see that little spider? It's a good thing I'm not scared of those. He came out of my florals. Just gonna continue placing these down. And you can use anything you have. Um, lots of times I get the comments that, you know, people can't fly, find the kind of florals that I have or their thrift stores don't have good florals and stuff like that. Well, you can go to Dollar General, you can go to Dollar Tree. Uh, Walmart has really beautiful picks too, and you can get some of their picks for 98 cents, which makes them even more affordable. You can also find floral picks at garage sales, at estate sales. You know, watch when churches are having sales. You can get things like, you know, from there also. So just a couple of things to keep in mind, not to mention Black Friday will be coming up and then Cyber Monday, and you can buy some things and put them back for next year if you've got the space for it. So now, once I've got all those pieces in, I'm just gonna start adding this, I think it's amaranthus, um, or seed pods, whatever you wanna use, and add that in here. It's just gonna give it a different textural element to keep it interesting. And then, just here and there, and then I'm just gonna put one randomly over here to the left on the top. Not even gonna have one on the right. Not even gonna do it. Now I'm gonna take a placemat from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna cut that beautiful centerpiece out of there. I'm gonna use it in my wreath. It's gorgeous. I had three of these. I thought I had four, but I only had three, so I can't use them on my table. Once it's cut out, this is how it looks. Gorgeous. All right, so I'm gonna put it aside and we're gonna work on a bow. I am going to make two bows for you. We're gonna do two different ones, two different ways, so you can decide what you like best. On the first bow, I'm using two pieces of each of these sort of burlapy ribbons and they are wired and we're gonna make a funky bow okay but this time we make the funky bow we're gonna when we fold it over make the little loop on the top we're gonna leave one strand longer than the other one for each one of those you see I'm gonna show you as we go along here I'm not gonna do this fast we're gonna do it slow I'm gonna pinch the next one up and that loop is about four inches across so you see what we've got so far. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. And this one actually happens to have come from Dollar Tree. That beautiful rust color. This one is from burlapfabric.com. And then the green and the gold that I have came from Hobby Lobby and I got those from 50% off. So I was very excited to get those. There's a lot of ribbon on there. And you can also use this gold and this green any time of year you know you can use this when you're doing your summer arrangements when you're doing lemons and bees and things like that gorgeous get it now while you can get it cheaper i don't want you to have any excuse to not craft because it's so good for the soul it's so good for you okay so look at that big bundle you see all is still in my hand i'm going to use a zip tie i'm going to wrap it around and then I'm not going to tighten it all the way down yet. I'm actually going to put a piece of floral wire in there, and then I'm going to tighten it up. I'm bad about not putting the wire pipe cleaners in there. All right, so this is how it's going to look. We're going to go to the long and the short tails, and we're going to dovetail each one of those. Y'all, this microphone is absolutely awesome. But I know you can hear my chair squeak. I know you can hear me swallow. You can hear me sniffle. I'm sorry about that. You can hear my dog bark outside. You can hear all that. Okay, so 
I just twisted that floral wire so it wouldn't slip out while I'm fluffing the bow. Just twisted it around the zip tie. And now I'm gonna start pulling those loops apart from each other. Pulling them apart, giving them some room to breathe here. I'm gonna pull those little short tails up and out also. Spreading everything out, giving it a little bit of room. Okay, we all know how to fluff a bow, but it is very, very important. Very important. Okay, now if, when you lay it down, it looks sort of like an octopus, right? It's got all these little pieces sticking out from it, and then it's got the loops right in the middle. I'm gonna lay everything down, make sure my wire is twisted in the right direction, try to make sure that I have the colors separated so no two things are together. Then I can just take that floral wire and wrap it around that wreath. Now that's what the funky bow is going to look like on here. I put that on here, I love the colors, but I don't think, in my opinion, this is the right bow for the wreath. So you're gonna see me take it off and fix it in a moment. I'll change it up. So I'm taking a popsicle stick. All I had was the wide ones and I'm just trying to break it into pieces so that I can use this as supports to put the little sign down that we made from the placemat. This is easy to do because you just stick it into the wreath and then you stick the other one there. It makes kind of like little arms go into the center. You're gonna add glue to it to hold it into the wreath. And then also on the arm little parts that are sticking out so that your sign will sit up on it. And because this is like a hard plastic type stuff, it's not gonna collapse. It stands up in there on its own. Just gonna nestle it down in there and press it to the, to the uh, thing until it is dry and then fluff my greenery around it. So this is how it's gonna look, is your first option with that particular bow on it. And I love the idea of it, I just wasn't feeling it for this wreath, I just really was not. Let me show you another little trick. If you use your grapevine wreaths over and over again and then you got hot glue on there that won't come off, get a tool like a heat gun or a blow dryer, start warming that up and then take one of those plastic stems off of your flowers and twist it in the glue that glue is gonna stick to the plastic and you can pull it right off of there and then you don't have the mess of the glue on there anymore. See, look at it coming off. Look at that, perfectly erased, love it. So I decided I wanted this copper ribbon on my wreath. Now I made my own um, wreath, my own bow making tool here. That's what you're seeing. I do have a video and I will I'll either put it in the comment section, I mean the uh, description box, or I will put a card in the video so that you can go and make your own if you're interested. They don't cost a lot of money anyway if you buy the tool, um, the branded tool, but you can make your own if you want to, and it doesn't cost a lot of money, and it's super easy. I'm not even a power tool kind of girl, and I made my own with no help from my husband. Okay. So we're gonna put a, leave a piece of tail out about 12 inches long, and then we're gonna start making loops. And I think I did six inch loops here. We're gonna do the same on both sides several times. So I'm just going to take that again. I like to kind of fold it in the middle, put the wires together and then press it down, flip it over. If your ribbon is the same on both sides, you don't have to do that flip over in the middle, but mine is not. One side is shinier than the other, and I want the shiny side out or up so the pretty side up right that's what you're seeing me do I'm trying to keep that pretty side up I think I end up with about three loops on each side at about six inches per loop I am not sure how much ribbon that was um, so you're going to have to actually do the math yourself on this one I apologize but uh, I don't remember okay Okay, it looks like I've actually got four loops on each side. So either way you wanna do it, the more loops that you put, the fluffier your bow is going to be, or the bigger your bow is gonna be. All right, so then I'm gonna cut the other tail off. I'm going to take a little piece of that copper ribbon and tie it right around the middle. I'm gonna tie it around the middle to hold the bow together, and we're going to tie this around the wreath. Now I'm gonna tie it in the same spot where the other one was. And I just really feel 
that this is the better bow. What do you think? You can do it either way and I'm happy to have shown you both ways. I show you my mess ups and I show you my stuff that I end up with. Then I wanna cover the little gap so I'm just moving that greenery around. No problem there, easy to do. You can watch my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at five Central Standard Time. If you enjoyed this video, I'm going to have another video in the box right here that you can click on for even more. Thanks so much for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon. Bye!